Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and welcome to episode 24 in our quick progression series. Today we're completing the Prosperity Space Station build and as we scroll down here you can see that this is going to be our main bridge, our main power generation unit and it's going to contain good cargo bay storage as well. Attached to the docking port of the superlift we've got our cupola unit and this entire segment is going to be detachable so that we can maneuver it around and actually switch these components out as we need. This segment's going to be self-sufficient, so we've got the cupola, followed by the remote guidance unit and battery, followed by the RCS tank, solar panels just for emergency, we've got RCS thruster blocks here for maneuverability, and that's basically it. Underneath, of course, we've got another docking port, just so that we can port this thing anywhere we need. So this segment's going to be a great little viewing platform that's also portable around other parts of our vessel. This brings us down to our next component which is our drilling platform and obviously, obviously we want this to be portable as well so it's got another Clampatron docking port underneath. And here up the top we've got our four medium thermal control systems, our four drills on top of a large ore tank, another large RCS tank, a flight unit for Kerbal Engineer, some RCS thrusters again, we've got a Convertitron 250 for processing our ore, another remote guidance unit for autonomous control, more emergency solar panels, a battery and of course another docking port. If you need to know more about mining and what the mining gear does, check out the previous episode. The next main segment of course needs another remote guidance unit. As we scroll out here you'll see the huge arms containing all of our solar arrays. So this is our powerhouse. Obviously we've got another battery. We've got Werner engines attached to both the top and bottom to control this huge beast along with the rest of the large Prosperity space station vessel. Only a small amount of oxidizer is in our two fuel tanks at the top and bottom and these are simply so that we can power the Werner engines. We've got a Communitron HG55 on this side. Near the cargo bay opening we have the M700 survey scanner if we need it. If we then pan around the vessel, we've got a Communitron 8888 unit there. At the bottom there, we've got another large battery and of course another senior docking port. Scrolling back up the vessel past the cargo bays, you can see up the top here we have all of our science units scattered around the top. We've got two of the large monopropellant tanks if we ever need to take this thing out by itself. And above that, the two smaller mystery goo units. And I've docked the two narrow band scanners just on the side there because they look really cool. Another Kerbal Engineer flight computer there. On the end of our solar panel arms we've got our lights that we can use to illuminate the entire central part of the vessel. And you can see there I've got four Gigantor solar arrays running down each side of each arm. Then we've got the RCS thrusters that are actually right on the end so that we can rotate the entire vessel really quite easily. And I have all the solar panels on the arm spaced out just perfectly so that none of them ever hit each other and they all extend out just so they're almost touching. So that's the main part of this vessel but inside the cargo bay as we come down here we've got a little few hidden surprises inside. We have a little rover but more importantly we've got an advanced grabbing unit component and we're actually going to be able to undock this and put this at the end of our vessel so that we can attach to an asteroid if we want to and essentially kick our drills in to do some asteroid mining. So again this is a completely independent unit, we can undock this, fly it over using the remote control guidance unit and dock it back to the front of the vessel. Inside our cargo bay we've got a few little docking ports running along the floor as well which just means that we can attach other things in here if we need to. So we'll close all that up. So that's about it for this segment of our Prosperity Space Station. Hopefully it'll all hold together fine when this is all joined together. So we'll, uh, we'll save and launch out on the launch pad here and what we want to do like we did in one of the previous episodes is make sure that our Prosperity Space Station is in its orbit just over the desert area over here. Oh, I've done this again! Crikey, I, how many times am I going to do this? I'm going to put some stability enhancers on this thing <laughs> so that this doesn't happen again. So of course after a quick reload we're back here with some stability enhancers this time. As I was saying it's important to make sure that the Prosperity Space Station is actually aligned up just near that desert area continent there just prior to liftoff and this is going to mean by the time we get to orbit we are basically very close to the vessel so that we can dock. Three, two, one, and launch. 
As we ascend, over on the right you'll notice that our flight engineer is set up to have the target selected for the Prosperity Space Station, so we can keep an eye on that relative inclination, which is just over 0.1 degrees at the moment. And as we pass 100 metres a second, we're going to tilt down towards the 90 degree marker. Around 10 degrees from the top of the nav ball will do. The rest of it will just occur naturally with our gravity turn. You'll notice here the video is sped up quite a bit, so as we pass 300 metres a second, you'll notice how much faster our velocity starts to gain as our tanks empty. Of course, if you've seen the super lifter in action before, you'll know that we can get all the way to orbit on this one tank of fuel, and we can actually return it and land it for a full refund. Well, almost a full refund if we refuel it. Just making very small up-down adjustments to keep that inclination as low as we possibly can. Still at 0.1 degrees and passing 1,000 metres a second there now. We want to reduce the amount of drag that we're experiencing here, so we're still angled quite high, but as we pass the 70,000 metre mark on our apolapsis, we're going to throttle back down to one quarter thrust. Just tilting fully towards the horizon there, and we're... Whoa, 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 come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. I think the atmosphere had actually grabbed it and tried to pull it over there for a minute. Just added a bit more thrust there so that we had more power with our engines gimbling back up towards the horizon. Now the Prosperity Space Station is orbiting at a height of 90 kilometers, so we need to cut our engines right there as we hit that point. We'll head out to map view to check out how things are going and we essentially want to time warp up to the apoapsis marker before we complete our orbital insertion burn. Coming around there and firing there now just to complete that orbital insertion. Engine cut off there. So we're already quite close to the Prosperity Space Station. We just need to make our orbit just a little longer so it can catch up. So we're doing our encounter maneuver here. As we get those intersects close, just using our RCS and the H and N keys to just fine tune that so that we get as close as possible. We're around one kilometer there. So we can now detach from the super lifter, we'll decouple the node there and watch the final segment of our space station drift away. The large solar panel arms there passing flawlessly in between each segment of the super lifter. That is beautiful. I never get sick of seeing that shot there. So as we watch that segment fall away, we're just going to throttle up so that the super lifter here is out of the vicinity so that it's not going to interfere with our docking. So to test our solar panels, we're going to point directly towards the sun and deploy all of our solar arrays. Look at that, and as you can see there, I've measured those solar panels out just so they come out just before they touch each other. Eight Gigantor solar arrays on each arm, making for a total of 32. So as we approach the intersect markers, we're going to take control of the thruster segment of our space station, just because that's the part that's got the ability to make easy maneuvers. So the main trick to use when you want to get close enough with your encounter to actually start docking is to switch to target mode, pointing retrograde and burning until you wipe off all your relative velocity. Then you point towards the target, make a small burn again, then just repeat that process until you're close enough to actually start docking. Keep in mind that if you were watching this in real time, you'd be watching it at about 10 frames a second because the part count now in both of these segments is getting pretty darn high. So the performance here on my little machine is actually getting pretty poor. <laughs> the video here has actually been sped up three times just so that it's all a lot smoother for you guys. So after several maneuvers getting our vessels close together, we can finally here try our docking maneuver. Now the new segment is a little more responsive because it is smaller and easier to maneuver with RCS thrusters, so we're using this to dock to the main booster and habitat stage. We've switched here to our locked camera mode just so that all of our maneuvers are relative to the camera. Using a combination of the I, J, K and L keys with our RCS thrusters as well as the normal W, A, S, D keys for just pointing in the correct direction and we want to point towards the target obviously as we're coming in. Due to the sheer size of these two vessels I'm not using the stability assist to keep pointing towards the target automatically just because it tends to overcorrect and just wobble everything around uncontrollably. 
Our angle here isn't quite right, but we just need to get close enough so the two docking ports are almost touching and they're going to slowly pull themselves together. I'm not even going to make any more adjustments with the RCS, we'll just be patient, wait for them to pull themselves back in together, and there we go, docked there. <laughs> that is awesome. So we'll bring out those solar panels again, and what you'll notice there is that our solar panels are going to serve two purposes, they're going to not only give us a huge amount of energy, but they're also going to shade our habitat unit and keep the rest of our vessel quite cool in comparison to what the front's going to be. So there we go, our Prosperity Space Station fully complete and ready to take on a wonderful new mission. Of course the ship is not going to get far without a dedicated crew on board. And of course to fill up this ship with a crew would cost us millions in funds, so we're probably not going to completely fill it to capacity just yet. So let's talk about the segments of this vessel. Firstly, here is our drill segment ready to go. But of course, if we're ever going to attach this thing to an asteroid to do some asteroid mining, we're going to need a grabber unit here. So that's the great thing about this vessel. We can detach the front cupola module and actually switch it out. Round we go there, turning, turning, turning. We're going to dock this on the booster segment of the vessel. So you'll probably see now that the reason we wanted those remote guidance units on each component here was so that we can manoeuvre everything around without any Kerbals actually being on board. I'm doing a pretty ordinary job here of getting these docking ports lined up. Obviously not concentrating enough. Check out the docking demonstration I did a few episodes ago to learn how to dock effectively. Probably a lot better than what I'm doing right now, I would say. In we come, left a little more, and there we go, they're docked. Now we'll open up our cargo bay and, oh, actually it's facing the wrong direction. We'll spin the entire ship around so that the cargo bay is facing the light. Now we just need to get to the docking port so we can decouple it, so I just got to move the camera around. I probably should have set up an action group for this, really. And here is our advanced grabbing unit, which we can now bring out, and we'll pop this on the front of our vessel for when we come in to do a asteroid mining mission. In real life, of course, you wouldn't be so heavy on the RCS thrusters, driving this thing around like a crazy person. Again, we've switched into locked camera mode, making those adjustments to get our docking port lined up. And of course, setting our target docking port and our control port. A vessel like this gives you lots of practice doing docking manoeuvres, and once you get the hang of it, it's all good. And there we go, docked there as well. Now that we're docked there, we can arm our advanced grabbing unit, and now we have a great asteroid drilling rig. Of course, if we don't need the mining component, we can actually detach it entirely. We could dock it back to the booster stage, we could really do whatever we want with this thing now. Of course, we still need to return the super lifter, so we're going to bring it back down over the ocean here. Actually, probably just a little more, because I've left this burn probably a little later than usual. Hopefully, we'll still be able to slow ourselves enough as we approach the KSC. The air brakes are out there now, of course. As we come in over the KSC, doing a small burn to bring ourselves under 2,000 meters per second. We do have quite a bit of fuel in our tank, but it does look like we're going to overshoot this, I think, so this isn't looking overly ideal, really. Jeez, we are going to overshoot this, too. We'll see how we go with the fuel we've got left in our tank. Damn it, just not quite low enough in the atmosphere to get a lot of drag going on. Ah, oh, jeez, it looks like we're going to end up in the ocean. Come on, come back. Come on, down, 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 down. Are we going to make this? Oh, jeez, it's going to be close. Ah, oh, come on, drogue shoots out. Drogue shoots out, come on. I can't use any more fuel because I'm not going to have enough to land otherwise. Main parachute's out. We, we might actually be just over the land still. Coming in here to land, I think we're going to be okay. 32 meters per second coming down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, we're down. We're down. <laughs> Jeez, we must be close to the ocean. Yeah, look at that. That was actually more luck than anything. And we have got bugger all fuel left. So as I wipe the sweat off my face, We'll bring out our super fueler to refuel the super lifter so that we can get a nice refund when we recover the vessel. 
Obviously, we're massively increasing the speed of the video because the super refueler is quite slow to move around. It's not too bad though, this whole process will take you a few minutes. As we come out here, we'll arm our advance grabbing unit. As I've had a bit more practice with the super fueler, I've noticed that hitting the brake key up the top there is much more effective than just using the uh, reverse key. Just docking to the super lifter and we'll immediately deploy all of our solar panels and drills. So if you watched the last episode where we built this super refueler, you'll know that it took us around 24 to 25 days to actually fully refuel the super lifter. Actually refueling it will give us around 180,000 in extra funds because of the value of this fuel. Just recovering the vessel there of course. So we've again returned our super lifter for 98% of its original value, meaning it's a very cheap ride into space, only costing us around 20,000 in funds. If you have any questions for me on that mission, whack them down in the comments below. Thanks very much for all of the wonderful subscribers that have subscribed to this channel. For those that haven't subscribed though, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. So we'll save the vessel and we just want to add some action groups because trying to manually deploy this amount of units all over the vessel is going to be a real pain. So we're going to automate all this. So in action group one, we basically want to deploy all of our solar panels, all of our drills and all of our radiators in the one go. Now we're basically setting all of these to toggle and then...